Okay, we're in section 11.6. Um, this is not a super long section, but it's a really important one. It involves two more convergence tests for series, and uh, one of them in particular, the ratio test, the first that we're going to talk about, we're going to use extensively throughout the rest of this chapter. So uh, this is, I would argue, one of, if not the most important convergence test that we cover in chapter 11. Um, you'll notice it's broken up into three sections. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to be talking about a series that has uh, terms of the form a n, and what we're going to be doing is pick. We're going to look at consecutive terms in this series. So a n and a n plus one. Those would be consecutive terms. We form a ratio where we take the latter term and divide it by the previous term. So a n plus one over a n. Take absolute values of that, and then take the limit as n goes to infinity. Depending on what that limit comes out to, we can say different things about the convergence of our series. So here's kind of a breakdown. If that limit is equal to some finite value less than one, then we can say that the series is absolutely convergent. Um, if the limit comes out to some number that's greater than one, so that includes if it goes to infinity also, but anything greater than one or diverging to infinity, then the series itself is divergent. If the uh, ratio is exactly equal to one, when we take that limit, then the ratio test is inconclusive. Uh, we get no conclusion about whether it converges or diverges in that case, and the, that means we would have to try some other convergence test. So we're gonna prove this, but I wanna just point out one, one of the things that's really nice about this test is it doesn't just show that a series is convergent, which a lot of our other tests have shown. It goes one step further and can show if a, if a uh, series is absolutely convergent or not, which is a stronger um, conclusion than simply saying that it converges. So with that, let's take a look at the proof of this thing. This is gonna use what we know about geometric series. So. Uh, let's take a look. Let's, we we want to know what's going on with the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n, because that's what shows up in all three of those cases up there. Now let's suppose for a second that uh, the um, limit L here is less than 1. So that means we're looking at the first case right here. Then I can find some number r that's also less than 1, but is a little bit greater than l. And this is a property of the real numbers. If you have any two real numbers that are not equal to each other, it's always possible to find a number that's between them, but not equal to either one. One easy way to do that is to take the average or the mean of those values. If you add them up and divide by 2, you get a number that's greater than this, but less than this. So r is just some real number that satisfies this property. Okay, so uh, that would imply that our limit, which we're saying is equal to L, is less than that value R. And what that means is this ratio, if I go far enough out in my sequence, so if I take N to be large enough, then the absolute value of these, these uh, terms here will all eventually be less than R, because that's how limits work. If you go far enough out in the sequence, then all of the terms after that will be within that tight little range that we're defining. So um, another way of saying that is there is there exists some positive integer n such that whenever little n is greater than or equal to that, we get the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n is going to be less than r. This means if I go far enough out of my sequence, this will happen for all of the terms after that point. Okay. Um, another way of writing this, though, I can multiply both sides by the absolute value of a n, and I can say that a n plus 1 in absolute value is less than the absolute value of a n times r. Again, whenever n is big enough. So if we uh, take uh, the, the terms of our sequence starting at this capital N and moving forward, then I would have this, a n plus 1, notice I'm using big N now, is less than the absolute value of a n times r. a n plus 2 would be less than the absolute value of a n plus 1 times r, but this is already less than this, so a n, the absolute value of a n r times this r is the absolute value of a n r squared. 
absolute value a n plus 3 is less than the absolute value a n plus 2 times r, which is already less than this, so I can multiply these together, and I get the absolute value of a n r cubed. And if you notice, generally speaking, we can say that the absolute value of a n plus k is going to be less than the absolute value of just a n times r to the power of k for all values of k greater than or equal to 1. Now, if I look at the series of terms that looks like this, that's a geometric series because this is how that series would look in summation notation. Here's what it would look like if I sum those terms, and I can see that each new term in the series is equal to the previous one times another factor of r. That's how we define geometric series. Well, I just realized I was off the page that whole time. <laughs> um, here's, here's what you're missing, so I think uh, we had most of that. All right, so this is that geometric series that I was referring to. This geometric series we know will converge if r is less than 1. That's what we showed uh, in, you know, when we talked about geometric series in the past. Specifically, if it's less than negative 1 but greater than negative 1, which it has to be because the way that we chose r, it has to be greater than L, and L can only be non-negative since it's a limit of a sequence of absolute values. So r is definitely going to be... Uh, between negative 1 and positive 1, which means this is going to converge. However, as we've already stated, um, the terms of the original series, when I take their absolute values, would produce this series right here, and each of these is less than each term, oops, it's the wrong thing, than each term in this series right here. So by the direct comparison test, this series has to converge as well. And because we're taking absolute values there, then that means that I have absolute convergence. So it's an even stronger thing than just saying convergence, okay? Looking at case two, if the absolute value of an plus one over an uh, is L, and that L is greater than one, then that means that, uh, or or if these terms, uh, these ratios go to infinity after taking their absolute values, then in those cases, um, I can, uh, sorry, oh, I'm reading the wrong thing here. Um, there must be some integer n such that whenever we take little n to be bigger than, greater than or equal to big N, um, the absolute value of this ratio must be greater than 1. And this is basically what we sh the same idea as what we already talked about in the first case. So what that means, I can multiply both sides of this by the absolute value of an. I get a n plus 1 in absolute values greater than a n. But this means that my term, the terms of my sequence are increasing. And they're also positive, which means they can't have a limit of 0. Because if they're positive and they're increasing, then they're not approaching zero. They're going the wrong way. So by the test for divergence, this series would have to diverge. If L is equal to 1, then neither of these proofs account for that. And we would say that the, um, the series is, we don't, we don't know. It's inconclusive. The test is inconclusive. So let's use our ratio test to test this series for convergence. Now in this section, we're going to see a whole lot of, uh, oh, sorry, let me let me back that up. I'm, I'm thinking of the next example. Let's just go ahead and work with this one. So we're gonna use uh, the ratio test. Now the, uh, that's, we could probably determine whether this converges or not using other tests as well, but let's see what the ratio test does for us. So I want the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n. So I want the n plus 1th term over the nth term. This is what the nth term looks like. The n plus 1th term I would get by plugging n plus 1 in for those n's there. So that's negative 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared. That's the n plus 1th term right there. The nth term just looks like negative 2 to the power of n over n squared, and we want absolute values here. Okay, so what can I say about that limit? Well, um, this will simplify because uh, I'm, I can take the reciprocal of this guy and multiply it to my numerator there, so I'm going to get negative 2 to the n plus 1 power times this n squared here over 
negative 2 to the n power, n plus 1 squared down there. Now, if we look at what's going to happen, you'll get some cancellation. So negative 2 to the n plus 1 over negative 2 to the n, this will cancel with all but one of those negative 2s. Okay. Now, all I'm left with at this point is a negative 2 here. Um, because I'm taking absolute values, the negative is going to go away. It's just going to become a 2, and that can be brought outside of my limit. 2 times the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, now, the remaining terms, n squared and n plus 1 squared, those are always going to be positive. So the absolute value is no longer necessary. And n squared over n plus 1 squared is the same thing as n over n plus 1 squared. Okay? We have seen this in a previous section. We showed that that expression right there is the same thing as 1 minus 1 over n, which is very easy to verify. Okay? Now this limit... Uh, if I take n to infinity, this term is going to go to 0, so I get 1 squared, which is just 1, times 2, that's equal to 2. Now remember, in the, limit, in the, the ratio test, we're trying to find this limit, and if it, we're comparing it to the number 1. If it's greater than 1, what does that tell us from our ratio test? Come back here. When L is greater than 1, then our series is divergent. So I would say that this diverges... by the ratio test. Okay, let's take a look at another example. All right, so this is the example I was thinking about when we started that previous one. I was starting to say something and I caught myself. But here I'm gonna say what I was gonna say before. Um, a lot of the series in uh, this section and then a lot of the sections that follow are gonna involve factorials. So that's that exclamation point. You should have seen this in a previous class, but as a reminder, factorials, n factorial, means that you're taking n and then you're multiplying it to n minus one, and then you multiply that to n minus two, and you keep multiplying all the way down until you get to one, okay? So basically, this only works with positive integers. There actually is a definition for zero factorial. We define it to be one. Uh, there's good reason for that, but I'm not going to get into that right here. Um, but if it's a positive integer, then you're multiplying that positive integer to all of the positive integers that come before it, which is what this is. So this is important to remember. Um, let's think about this guy here. I want to test this series for convergence. So same idea. I want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value um, what does a n plus 1 look like here? Well, um, I'm substituting an n plus 1 in for all of the n's that are appearing. So I would get n plus 1 factorial there. And then I'm going to get n to the power of n over n factorial there. So here's my n plus 1th term. Here's my nth term. We form this quotient. Okay. Now, simplify. This is the same thing. First of all, all of these terms in here are going to be positive because n is only taking on positive integer values, so the absolute value bars are unnecessary. We can lose those. I'm going to get n plus 1 to the power of n plus 1 here. Um, I'm going to get um, n factorial there. I'm going to get n to the uh, nth power here and n plus 1 factorial right there. So how do things simplify now? Let's see. So first of all, factorials cancel with each other in a really interesting way. If you think about what n factorial is, it's this, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1. What is n plus 1 factorial? Well, it's the same product, but it's going to have one extra factor of n plus 1 because it's going to go to n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 and so on and so forth. So this guy and this guy have almost all the same factors. This has just one extra, um, that n plus 1. So that n plus 1 is going to cancel with the n factorial and just leave me with n plus 1 here. But then that n plus 1 can cancel with one of the n plus 1s right there because I have n plus 1 to the power 
of n plus 1. So now what I'm left with is the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 to the n over n to the power of n, which can also be written this way, n plus 1 over n to the power of n. Or like this, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n. That simplifies to this. Okay, this is a limit that you have seen before. Um, you, saw, you should have seen it in calculus one. This is how we define the number e. Remember, e is uh, defined as a limit, and it comes from this expression right here. e, as you know, is also greater than one. So this series also diverges by the ratio test. Okay, let's try another one. We're going to test this series for convergence. Um, the series uh, n equals 1 to infinity of n factorial squared over 2n factorial. This is a complicated looking one. So let's see what happens. Using the ratio test again, n goes to, the limit is n goes to infinity, absolute value. I'm replacing the n's by n plus 1's here. So I'm going to get n plus 1 factorial, which I then have to square, over 2 times n plus 1 factorial. Okay, be careful with how the n plus 1s get substituted in here. It's not 2n plus 1. It's 2 times, in parentheses, n plus 1. And then down here, I'm going to get n factorial squared over... Uh, 2n factorial. Once again, the absolute values are unnecessary. Everything in here is already positive. So I'm going to ditch the absolute values and take the limit as n goes to infinity. Re let's get some things kind of rearranged here. So I'm going to have n plus 1 factorial squared. I'm going to write that as n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial. Let's actually write out that thing times itself. That's what it means to square something. Um, this uh, 2n factorial is going to be up here in the numerator, so I'm going to get 2n factorial. Then what's going to be in my denominator? n factorial squared, but let's write that as n factorial n factorial. Okay, And then this right here, I, I can distribute that 2n, and I'm going to get 2n plus 2 factorial. Okay, now a lot of stuff can cancel here. And let's think about how. We've already seen that n plus 1 factorial over n factorial will simplify by canceling that entire n factorial out and leave me with just an n plus 1 there. That's going to happen twice because there's two of these. Okay, what about these guys? How do these factor or how do these cancel? Well, 2n factorial is 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2 and so on and so forth. 2n plus 2 is only 2 larger than 2n. That means this will have two additional factors that this one does not have. But other than that, they have all the same factors. This entire thing is going to cancel, and we're going to be left with just two more factors here. Let's see what those are. The limit as n goes to infinity. I've got n plus 1 times another n plus 1, so that's going to be n plus 1 squared. And then down here, we're going to have 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. Because remember, this is, getting, this is decreasing by 1 each time I multiply by a new thing. If I decrease this by 1 one more time, I'm going to get 2n, and then all of the remaining factors with that 2n make 2n factorial. That's why that canceled this out. Okay? So this... The limit as n goes to infinity of uh, this guy. If I were to multiply this out, I would get n squared plus 2n plus 1. If I multiply this out, I'm going to get 4n squared uh, plus, what's this going to be, 2 plus 4, 6n plus 2. Okay? Now, this I know right away is going to come out to 1 fourth. And how do I know that? Well, I've done enough limits of this type to know 
that if I have a rational expression where I have a, pa uh, a polynomial over a polynomial, and if those polynomials have the same degree, so two and two, then the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing is just going to be the quotient of their leading coefficients, one over four. Okay, um, now that's, I know that because I've done enough of these, but you can show it by either using L'Hopital's rule or by multiplying this by one over n squared over one over n squared to simplify things down, you're going to end up with one fourth in the end. One fourth is less than one. So by my, uh, ratio test, I know that this series is absolutely convergent. Series is absolutely convergent. By the ratio test. Okay, so that was a particularly tricky one, but the thing to pay attention here to here is how those factorials cancel. And if you get a factorial squared or cubed or something like that, it's better to write out all of those factors because then you can match things and see how they cancel out like we did here. All right, um, that's it for this one. In the next video, we're going to cover the root test.